Quiet on set, you damn kids. Who wants to make a short? We'll pay you an IMDb credits and experience. Lights, camera, action, it's I don't give a flick, your favorite film podcast, oh yeah. Tarantino, Mero, and Spielberg, here's looking at you, kid. We talk movies and TV shows, and sometimes other things we like. And no one's coming right at your fucking face, every minute of every day will never stop. We'll talk lenses, music, and foley. We'll understand the depth of field. We've got theories so out of this world and epic it'll blow off your fucking tits. Oh yeah, that was bullshit. So, so Luke, I have a theory on Disney princesses, um, and I'd like to pose that you. That they're boring. No. Uh, so, so <laughs> okay, then I'm probably wrong. So tell me, um, which is your favorite of the Disney princesses? Okay. Of uh, uh, is there a choice? Any of them? Any of them? In, any of them? At this point, Princess Leia. Oh, <laughs> loophole. Uh, well, whether by creative uh, abilities or just corporate acquisition, I guess that's a princess for Disney. Yeah. She's literally a Disney princess. Yep. So uh, go fuck yourself. Yep. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> hey, we don't condone that type of language know, on I this know. family I show. It, I meant it. I know. I Gary knows that I wasn't. I, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> oh. It was a okay. friendly. It was a friendly. You know, yeah. as it like, haha! I got you, buddy. <laughs> I got you, good fucker. I got you, good there, bud. <laughs> no, fuck me, okay. right? <laughs> yeah, like, fuck you, get you an asshole, right? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Okay. Fair. Okay, but look, I, well, I'll, 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 I'll feed you. Okay, traditional like no, no, anim, uh, animation Disney princesses. Uh, no, uh, Princess Leia will work. Um, so, what's your? Sorry, please. So, what's yeah, your theory? the, the what? theory is that um, uh, guys uh, pick the Disney princess with the kind of girl that they want. Uh, the most know. feminine. Well, no, no, that they want to, you know, the kind of girl that attracts them. And, oh, okay. And women pick the Disney princess that they identify with most. So you, Interesting. so by Lucas, sure. by you picking pr- princess Leia, you like a, a strong independent woman. Um, who's I sure do. Kind of feisty. <laughs> and that's why all a little this criticism, bit incestuous. A little bit, but that's only because she's so passionate. I get you. I that, get you. That's just a nice way of saying she's crazy. So, well, you know what? Crazy in the head, crazy in the, Woodshed. But my butt. In the wood. What? Where? Uh, where? Uh, Gary. That's what fair. Is, well, I'm wait. trying to feed in. I'm trying to. Not all. It's funny. That's how. This how. That's how well tuned Gary's theory is. Because I threw him a monkey wrench, and it kind of just exactly proves his point. Excellent. Like, Good. <laughs> I, I. I. I guess no. I mean, he's right. That is definitely the kind of women that I'm into, and uh, I would never deny that. So I mean, that's 100 percent true. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I'm your host, Johnny Blackburn, and alongside me this week, as they are every week, are my co-hosts, Gary Elmore and Neil Riley. And this week we are privileged, nay, honored to have back to the show with us uh, uh, my good friend, uh, TV producer Kapil Mahendra. Kapil, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to be back. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Hopefully we'll have another rousing discussion just like we did on uh, politics and film. We'll definitely keep the good times rolling. And we're also welcoming back for the umpteenth time uh, film enthusiast, Lucas Hare. Luke, how you doing? Hey, everybody. What's up? Oh, wow. Okay, so ignore my question about how you're doing. That's fine. Great. Maybe he's too traumatized to talk about Maybe. That. I mean, you started talking about Disney princess theories, so yeah. that would give anybody nightmares. That may be a uh, foreshadowing. Right, can we do a take two? Okay. We can do take two. Take two. <clears throat> take- hey, Johnny, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Hey, thanks so much for your, your very kind and cordial response. I appreciate Quick that. Quick question. Where can we download this podcast at? <laughs> this podcast right here? Well, you can download it off of Apple, Spotify, Pandora, Awesome. Google Podcast, uh, any of them. We're actually literally on every podcast home from here to Timbuktu. Yep. So I wonder where that goes. Does it help if people like and subscribe? Will that make a difference? Only, only that if they the smash channel? the like button. Only if they smash it really hard. <laughs> we got to smash it. 
Uh, how do you smash a light? You would just click it. You click it real click hard. The you light break button. that mouse. Sma- smash the That's light right. button. That's right. I was going to say, if you're not breaking your mouse for your favorite YouTube channel, then you don't care. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> apparently, apparently not. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, guys, we've got a we got a really interesting one tonight. Uh, I, I suspect that the opinions and the the debates on this one are going to go long into the night, even though we, we don't have as long tonight as we normally do, just because it is so late. Uh, but we're going to jump right into it. Uh, I'm Want to, we're going to be talking about the rating system that we've had currently in Hollywood and across the country, across the globe at this point, mm-hmm. uh, for really close to a, almost a century at this point, I guess about 70 years uh, coming up here now. But we, uh, we're going to talk about the MPAA, uh, and the MPAA is the Motion Picture Association of America, and their current governing laws of the mm-hmm. ratings in film and how that affects distribution and how that affects uh you know what parents let their kids see uh and what film the film audience actually wants to go and watch uh depending on that rating so let's dive right into it the oscars are right around the corner and they when are this indeed when this episode comes out they will have already happened since it's tomorrow um well then yeah that's not getting edited by tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> that's okay yeah, that's fine uh this did bring up a pretty good uh, it it brought up a really interesting topic i thought um i had put down with the oscars does the current rating system that we have do we feel like it hinders the creative and artistic abilities of filmmakers when it comes to award seasons Mm -hmm. what they're able to add does it cause movies to be less realistic than they should be um you, you you know a lot of past best picture winners have been uh some of them of course have been rated r but a lot of them if you go back and look over the last 30 years are pg-13 mm-hmm. um gary i know we'll get into the pg-13 rating a little bit later and you feel pretty strongly uh one way or another about that uh so i do want to jump in and uh gary i'm going to throw this to you since you and i were talking about it earlier today uh what do you think just as far as the oscars go do you think that the MPAA ratings hinder the filmmaker's ability to fully create the project that they want to create and that they feel the audience needs to see? Well, so just to kind of go over the rating system, if people aren't familiar with it, uh, they uh, they rate it into five different categories. It's G for general audiences, which is appropriate for kids of all ages and mm-hmm. families. Everybody. Yeah. And then PG, which is parental guidance, which is... Uh, Parental guide does is suggested to watch the movie with them, so don't just plop your kid down because they may see something scary. Might have like comic question. violence or uh, you know uh, like a a cartoon buttocks or yeah. something. Maybe maybe a, a minor curse word. Maybe yeah. you know like crap or mm-hmm. something along those lines. Uh, PG thirteen, uh, which is a really big category, uh, mm-hmm. is parental guidance suggested for teenagers. Uh, and this is the category where you get like you can say one fuck. Um, in the, uh, in the whole movie, um, you know, violence doesn't have any blood or anything like that. And then you have R for restricted, which is, uh, you know, uh, for people that are, uh, going to the movies with their parents. Um, and these are the more violent films that you'll see, like the Jokers, the, uh, Goodfellas, those kind of movies. And then NC-17, which is, uh, no one can go in there unless they're 17 or older. Um, and that's pretty much a straight up porns. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, just uh, <laughs> no, no, no. That I don't think that has a rating. I think that's yeah. just rated X, and it's not in theaters <laughs> anymore. Uh, right. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's the rating system. So I, I think uh, Johnny, going back to your question, that uh, they typically do uh, l- restrict what is made in a movie a lot of times because I, I think a lot of times the a movie that should or would be better as R um, gets watered down to a PG-13 rating um, so that it can appeal to a broader audience. And that may hurt its chances in the Academy because you, you do lose that more sort of authentic level that you would get with a, with an R rating when you're not uh, restricting yourself, ironically. (laughs) Um, So funny. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, you you think about like, like the James Bond movies, okay, um, uh, the ones with Pierce Brosnan, um, you know, those are PG-13. When he shoots somebody, there's no blood, um, and it's not a lot of super graphic violence, although there is some graphic things in the movies, whereas... They don't show the blood when a guy gets shot through the chest. Right. And they don't, like, blood splat. Right. Like, they wouldn't have rated our yeah. movie. And right. then you move to uh, the Daniel Craig movies, um, and I think uh, those were rated R, were they not? If I'm not mistaken. And, you know, you have... Uh, 
a more more, yes, more violence, more kind of, of you know rushing. So mm-hmm. um, there are uh, a lot more movies in the PG thirteen category by orders of magnitude, just because those are able to get more um, audience people to come to them. So like pretty much all of the Marvel movies are PG thirteen, right? Um, you know, even though it may have some violent stuff, like cutting off Thanos's head, you know that's okay though. Apparently, he's not a person. Well, it's a he's an alien. <laughs> and he's an, uh, he's yeah, he's a he's a this he's this demagogue, basically, that's a being from another planet. And they don't show guts or anything. And, and I understand. I think that's a general consensus is that PG-13 is just so it's a moneymaker where it's across the general spectrum. You can get a larger audience with that. Um, some parents will think it's suitable for their teenage child to go ahead and see that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if they're, you know, 13, 14, 15, as opposed to an R movie where, you know, if they're 18, 17 or under it's not acceptable for them to go see it. Um, but, but my question, my question is more directed at, do you think it hinders the ability of filmmakers when they go into award season? Yeah, I, absolutely. Cause I think that you lose, um, that authenticness, sure. uh, that you, you could have if the story calls for it now. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk more about how that affects movies later, but I, I think that that really does kind of pull back, Um, some of the movies, how they would be portrayed if they weren't also worried about, ooh, is this going to fall into the R category if I do this, even though I feel as a director or the storyteller that 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 should happen. Right. Which is why you have director's cuts released later on. That's true. You know, I mean, look at Zack Snyder and Justice League. Yep. Four (laughs) hours and like four hours of completely nonsensical dribbling crap uh we'll get into that on on another episode um kapil this i i I pose the same question to you somebody that's actually been doing been in the industry for such a long time um do you feel that do you feel that it hinders the artistic ability of of filmmakers and and dps and producers when award season comes around uh when they have to kind of lower that rating to broaden the audience Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's no way for a, an artistic person to express themselves when they're working under any type of guidelines whatsoever. Right. Uh, so when it comes to what they can do, especially geared towards award season, it gets very difficult. But I look at the rating system from the other side sure. uh, as more of a guideline for parents to kind of gauge if it's acceptable for what they want their children to be exposed to or not. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, and that's really the key to me is just to kind of understand as a, as a father now as well, of young children, sure. uh, to understand what the rating is describing in, in today's environment, because we've all seen the progression of ratings. I mean, I remember uh, films in the 90s uh, that you watch even to, to this day on like on a family channel that will show nudity, mm-hmm. but they still carry that PG rating from from back then, although today it would never be PG let alone PG-13 for some of these scenes. And that's that's just for, yeah, and, and that's for just like, you know, the, the silhouette of um, like, yeah, so, like of a naked woman or something. They may not necessarily show the the genital area or the, or the breast but yeah they'll they'll certainly show um the area i remember when i was i was five and i my parents took me to see forrest gump it was pg-13 um but they have they have multiple sex scenes uh, or i guess one sex scene in particular um and then extensive drug use uh and my mom in the scene and where you turned out fine yeah, i turned out well, yeah. i turned out great look at me you know i'm the i'm a model of success <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> fuck you Gary <laughs> bringing up my past childhood traumas you brought it up <laughs> but, but you magnified it fair enough um yeah no no I mean you know it's it's like you yeah like you said it's certainly different you know three decades later than it was back then absolutely uh Luke what, what about you where, where do you where do you think this kind of falls I mean I think it's I think it's, I'm probably gonna repeat what was already been said I mean yeah I think it's a hindrance mm-hmm. um and I recognize the value in so far as letting because i was this is kind of the position that i have as if i was a parent i would want to know uh you know what am i getting into if i see this particular movie am i going to have to see some sexuality or some violence that i'm maybe not comfortable with or that i don't want my kid to see yet but i think that's a different conversation 
about sure. what, you know the value of a rating system in general. I mean, I think the studios could have their own individual rating systems. You could have a more voluntary rating system. I think it's a separate conversation. The value of the rating system to the consumer is a separate conversation than the structure of the current rating system. And so the question is, does the current structure hinder our artistic creativity? I right. think, yeah, of course. I mean, I think the very nature of a rating system is designed to do that. I mean, rated R is restricted. You're not allowed to see it. Right. Um, I think most people over the age of 18 should kind of be offended by that to say, who the hell are you to tell me that I'm restricted from seeing some sort of creative content as though I'm a child and I can't handle these ideas. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's right there. Yeah. It, Absolutely. It, it, it does remind me of uh, an interesting story. Uh, when Johnny Neal and I were younger, um, the uh, there was a movie that came out called Shaun of the Dead that was rated R. And uh, so we all, uh, with some of our friends, went to go see it. Uh, Neil and I, being the oldest, we were the only ones who were 18 at the time to actually get into the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, Johnny and everyone else had to go... <laughs> See, the forgotten. Uh, uh, a movie that uh, was not quite as entertaining. I forgot <laughs> almost all of it. The Forgotten. Yeah. 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 It was horrible. Um, and <clears throat> it, it was interesting because the, like, how, how just how, uh, you know, just our date of birth tended to, you know, demarcate us from what we could see, even though, you know, we all went to the same school, we all hung out and talked and were friends. But just by dint of being born earlier, Neil and I, uh, got to go in and see a really great movie and uh, John, <laughs> Johnny and them had to go in and see a, a, a not so great movie. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost have fucked me over twice. His, his whole life is ruined yeah. by them. What movie did y'all not? What was the other movie? The Forgotten. No. Oh, oh are you talking about? The <laughs> was that literally? Because that's what it was. It yeah. was called The Forgotten. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, it was absolutely horrible. I just remember that every time somebody tried to give away some information about the antagonist, which were the aliens. They got sucked up into the yeah. sky. Yep. The story and was, was, Oh, was it the one where Julie, Julian Julian Moore's Moore. son got kidnapped right. and at the end there's a car wreck and they find, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It was awful. Yeah. Was such a bad movie. But yeah. So hey, at least it wasn't forgot. We remembered how bad it was. Yeah, yeah. we did. It's one of those movies that's so bad. It's, Something bad. I want to forget. Yeah. <laughs> it's still bad. It's, it's so bad. It's still bad now. <laughs> uh, Neil, what do you th do? What do you think? Do you agree with? I guess pretty much everybody that the rating system is is a hindrance for the creativity of of filmmakers. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have to agree with everybody. Everything that's been said. You know, for me, I think uh, the Oscars is supposed to recognize you know outstanding in filmmaking. So let's say you take an imaginary film, you take the best director in the world, you take the best actors, actresses, you take the best writers, and you come up with the best story, and the MPAA slaps an NC-17 sticker on that film. Or they won't even review it, or they'll say, we're not even going to look at this. They're never no going to look at it. You're never going to be able to market it. It's never going to be shown in theaters. Right. The public's never going to see it, and you're never going to win any awards. And that's, I think, the biggest problem with the MPA. Absolutely. I think the Oscars in particular, with all due respect, I, I was watching it a lot as a kid, for sure. But I, I don't really – it's not a thing that sh should necessarily be marketed to children and teenagers. You know, I mean, the people that are going to be the most interested in watching it are adults. And most of the stories that are really interesting in the world are – can sometimes be very brutal. And, you know, those those movies that actually go the extra mile to be as authentic as you were saying, Gary, earlier as possible, those are the ones that that really stick with you. And those are the ones that really stick out in your mind as some of the greatest stories to have, have ever been. Um, I, 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 I would like to clarify one thing, though. I mean, because um, we, we have kind of, I think, been misspeaking about this because we've been saying that the, the rating system is restrictive to people. But the the MPAA is, uh, you know, all it does is it rates movies and puts them out there for the public. Uh, it's the actual studios and directors themselves that are adhering to that that is the restrictive part. It's not like the MPAA is saying, you can't make this movie. They're just saying, we're going to rate this movie, right. well, it, it, which lowers the... Right, but then it, what happens to a movie theater if I decide, if yeah. I own a theater and I say, I'm not enforcing rated R, I'm going to let kids get it. What happens to it me? It keeps their distribution... Gone. Yeah, the there's, legal, gone. there's legal yeah. ramifications yeah. Right, right, to right. that. Like there is there, there is involvement. Right. <clears throat> like you can't there is government involvement. There is a tacit partnership with the government to enforce the system. Well the, the MPA is a non government organization. 
Right, the MPA, right. There's a tacit partnership. So there's laws that enforce this. So if I, as a movie theater, mm-hmm. decide I'm mm-hmm. not going to do this, I still have to, I'm still roped into it. Now, I'm not saying whether that's good or bad, but there is a legal side of this that's still there. It's not completely voluntary for everybody in the system. I, as a theater owner, don't really have a say in how this goes. Okay. Yeah. I, I see that. Right. I, and I mean, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I think, and, and we'll, we'll dive into that portion uh, a yeah, little bit more. I'm not saying it's good just, or bad, just not passing a judgment right, on it. Just to say, based off of, based off the original question, does it hinder creativity when it comes to award season? I'm going to go back to what Neil was talking about. That's a perfect example. Yeah. Is that, is that yes, the, the greatest story of all time, like you said, Neil, if it has the greatest writers and directors and actors, and whatever, may have been written, but may have very well been sliced up even more because of the MPAA. And then the audience suffers because they weren't able to witness the beauty in its entirety. And I think that's a big problem. Well, this is not a hypothetical. Know? This yeah. is how many movies have we heard where this is the case? No, it's absolutely where they not were, a hypothetical. Yeah. Where, where, the, where the studio exec stepped in and said, hey, we want to get PG-13 because we want to get wider distribution sure. We want to get sales, which God bless them. You know, I would too. But the argument is, you know, is this even a part of the conversation that they should be having? If the rating right. system wasn't there, that wouldn't even be something the studio execs would be worried about. They would say, make what's great so people will come and buy it. Sure. And if you go back, even if even from that, if you go back and you look at past award winners for best picture and stuff like that um there's been a fair amount of pg-13 ones but really not not a ton over the last 20 years i mean you've got the, the return of the king uh crouching tiger hidden dragon um forrest gump i guess uh, let's see on this list incredibles and a couple you know pixar movies got in there too um you know and so i i wonder and we'll get into this later i wonder what you know crouching tiger hidden dragon lord of the rings what if pg-13 was completely abolished and it was just completely negated and they just took it away completely and you could only pick rated rpg i wonder how it would have changed those films would they have gone the full route of adding blood and guts and and sex and stuff or would they have lowered lowered the the, the violence and mm-hmm. the graphic nature of it to well, a more suitable pg rating yeah it's just I, interesting to think about yeah. um so let's jump in i want to before we we get into the nitty-gritty because pg-13 as a rating itself is is an interesting is an interesting rating to look at because I mean, it's the most controversial. It, it might be a money ploy or maybe it's not if you're coming from a parent's perspective. Um, the MPAA themselves. Um, so for those of you that have seen the documentary that was really popular, released back in 2006 called uh, This Film Is Not Yet Rated, it is a little one-sided in their viewpoint, but it was a very interesting documentary looking into uh, the back, excuse me, the backdoor dealings of the MPAA, how they rated everything, how vague they were with why they rated movies a certain way. Um, you know, they wouldn't give information out about the people that work there. Um, and they claimed that they rotated out the judges on the panel and like the board of directors. Um, and then we find out that they didn't as much as they said they were. So we're going to get into all that. But the first question I want to pose to everybody, um, is this group necessary? The MPAA, um, Kapil, I want to start with you. Do you think the MPAA as an organization, the hold that it currently has on the rating system, is that necessary? Is this group necessary? I think so. I think so because... Outside of the artistic part of it, again, as a parent, how do you gauge what's appropriate for your kids or not? Right. Uh, I think it doesn't need to be taken so seriously, the ratings, and it shouldn't be such a big of a deal as as people make it if we just kind of uh, take a step back and just appreciate the guidelines that they, that they propose. But an interesting example that I always think about with ratings is uh, we, we all will remember all of the d- discussions and debates about Eyes Wide Shut. Mm -hmm. Eyes Wide Shut was given an NC-17 rating, Mm -hmm. but it still had so much censorship in the US version versus what they could play in Europe. Uh, And there was a lot of debate and argument that, well, if you're giving them an NC-17 rating, why do they still have to censor so much of it? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's yeah, it's it's cr- it's crazy to think about that, especially when the movie came out, you know, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. I can't remember the exact year, um, but where we've come 20 years from now, 
that type of movie getting an NC-17 and the kind of movies that are getting a rated R rating right now, it's just crazy to see how far we've come in the last 20 years. Well, and that's just you know? the capricious nature of any rating system is that it's going to reflect whatever sensibilities of the four people who are sitting on the board at the that's time. Right. Correct. Correct. Right, right. Uh, so, Luke, Luke, same question posed to you. Is this group, is the MPAA necessary? Uh, is it necessary? I don't think so. No. Does it have benefits? Sure. But I mean, is it necessary? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. What benefits does the MPAA provide us? Uh, I mean, I think, again, I mean, if you're looking at it from this perspective of what kind of content am I expected to be engaged with when I go into this movie, the rating system helps with that. Again, I don't think that only the MPAA could do that. I think you'd have plenty other ways of doing that without the MPAA. And so that's just sort of an ancillary benefit that you get from the side of it. But other than that, I mean, I personally don't think there is much. And I don't think the rating system itself is much of a benefit beyond just informing the consumer and again, I think there's just there's many other ways that could be done without that. And so I, I think it's more it's again, it, it's maybe just more of a personal uh, philosophy kind of thing. But I just think that uh, the the uh, the impetus should be on us, should be on parents to understand what kind of content their children are consuming and know what it is and not just trust that someone's going to tell them your kids should watch this. Put it put sit them in front of the TV and let them watch it. I just think there's a little more personal responsibility involved in this whole thing and so a lot of this i think is uh is is not again it's not necessary not saying it doesn't have benefits but to argue that it's necessary for the market to function not at all yeah i mean don't you think i mean and it could appeal a question to you as well since you're the only parent currently on this panel in in a in a film if you read if you're able to read the synopsis ahead of time uh, if you're able to see what type of film it is you watch the trailer do you think that's enough of a giveaway of what the film is going to be like? Let's say there were no ratings for movies ever and you saw the trailer and read the the synopsis or overview for um, um that's, that's not it's not you enough know? because you that, what, it, with ratings do you can that list that they give you it whether it has language, mm. sexual content, drug use, smoking uh, and nudity. Does that count in the rating system or is that just informational? Yeah, I mean, and, then, and that current in the current rating system that does count, and that does count in the rating system. Oh. Go ahead, Luke. Right, but that's not. But, but the actual, uh, you know, uh, sexual content or violence is that a rating or that is that information? Yeah, that I mean, that's information, so you can decide whether or not you want it. You want so, to see I mean, it yourself. All I need is the information. Yeah, I don't need the official stamp, whether it's PG thirteen R or whatnot. Right. I just need the information of what to expect. Okay, yeah. So as so as as a parent, you're so, you're, so not necessary. Yeah, exactly. So as, as so a parent, yeah. You're so like, then yeah, then not necessary, mm. but beneficial. Sure. Okay. Right. It has benefits, right. but difference between having benefits and being a necessity. That is, we could not function without this. Sure. Definitely not a necessity. Yeah, definitely not. But the information yeah. is appreciated. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. Of Absol course. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Neil, what do you think? Is it necessary? You know, uh, I kind of feel like as much as I disagree with how the MPAA is run and how they do their ratings, I do think it is kind of a necessary evil. Mm -hmm. um, because I do think having the rating system is a great guideline, as we all know, basically it's, it was put in place to protect the children. I think it's a great guideline, but if you didn't have a single entity doing it, every distribution, every major film company would be doing their own rating systems. Paramount, if they come out with a new video that should be NC-17, they may lower the rating down to an R. Sure, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you certainly or would. print R than you than you But people would learn. People would recognize, just like we know with, with certain Blumhouse, okay, this is going to be a low, but people recognize, okay, a Paramount rated R is not the same as, a, as an MGM rated R. And then if people don't buy Paramount rated Rs, then Paramount will change their rating system to be more consistent with what the other studios are doing so that their consumers can be better prepared for the products that they're getting so i mean again i think just the distinction is yes a rating system is good the current rating system as it is is this the is this the necessary evil i mean i think again i don't think there should be no rating system i think ratings are good and it's you know again especially as again because i'm not a parent but i definitely think about you know do i want my kid to see this kind of stuff if i were a parent would i be this is the kind of ideas that i'm comfortable seeing you know being presented in this way but uh i just think there's a distinction between having the mpaa and literally anything else yeah for sure uh gary how about you i i really do appreciate the 
what the what function the MPAA serves. I don't think that they necessarily go about doing it in the the best way possible. Sure, but I think that it's critical for people um, of all kinds, especially parents, to have have that information at their fingertips and having a consistent rating uh, across uh, no matter what production company is making the movie makes it a lot easier for parents um to to choose so like like a grade a beef if you buy grade a beef no matter who makes it you you know what you're getting theoretically sure and <laughs> that that i think is how the mpaa should function for society to to give us an idea of okay you know what's in this movie uh, i i agree with kapil that it's most important to have the information of the specifics so is this cartoon violence or is this graphic violence you know um and you know that's that's really key but also to have just sort of a total summation of you know all these kind of add up to this is is important and i think if the mpaa were more transparent with how they rated things that would help people understand why the movies get the ratings they get absolutely uh and i mean don't you think the now, hang, hang on one second, Luke. Uh, absolutely, because you go back and you look at, especially, and I'll, I'll use the documentary as reference. If you go back and you 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 see the reasonings they're giving for all of these, and really famous directors too, P- PTA, Martin Scorsese, uh, Spielberg, Tarantino, uh, whoever. Um, if you look at what they're telling them, they're getting the NC seventeen for. It's very vague, mm-hmm. and you're just really not sure why they're giving it. And it's it's. Well, we'll get into it more in a second. Luke, I'm sorry. Go ahead and continue with what you were going to say. You know, basically kind of backing you up. And that's it. Oh, OK, cool. Well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I would I would actually surprisingly. I would I would have to say that it is necessary to have not necessarily the MPAA, but some some singular entity that all of the all of the not only the major production companies because we've talked about how big indie production companies are getting right now a24 blumhouse etc um newmark um if you go and everybody is able to agree on the guidelines they're able to agree on the specifics of what the rating should be at then i think there should be one singular entity that is controlling that i you know it's i the same thing to luke's point where he's talking earlier and he was saying well i mean if if everybody every production company had their own singular rating system but they were all different you know maybe somebody made an nc17 r or they made it instead of r made it pg13 or something like that um people wouldn't know who to trust you know and they wouldn't you know they like like kapil maybe you'd take your kids or something and you'd, you'd go see a movie that was rated pg find out it's pg-13 they drop maybe one or two f-bombs and a guy's arm gets chopped off and you, you know, the kids are scarred for the next for the next couple of years or something they have nightmares or something um so right, it's right if it's the wild wild west you do potentially run into a bit of a a bit of a buzzsaw almost you know you're consistency kinda... is what's key and yeah you can't really get that i don't think with with everybody you know, doing it 25 themselves. different production companies right yeah um i i do i like the way the mpaa does it absolutely not mm-hmm. um i think they're very out of touch which is going to segue into our next question anyways um but i i do think that it is it is necessary to have one singular group that is voted on to have at least give us the guidelines at least give us at least give us some type of rating now should they should that should that allow them uh, if they have an NC17 to not receive distribution hell no that's absolutely ridiculous I, I mean if if a theater wants to see it with no ramifications then they should be able to show it that's that's just that's freedom <laughs> like that's that's just a founding principle of what our country was built on like that's ridiculous that you wouldn't be able to do that um so segueing into uh the next portion of the topic with the mpaa originally uh the 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 heads of the mpaa the president had stated that they rotated out their board of directors or the people that the film raters, the people that rated mm. the films, they rotated them out every couple of years. And they were typically parents that had young children. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then we, we go in and obviously we, we don't have, you know, outside of what the documentary showed us, there's not a ton of information out there to, sh- to, to, 
to dispute it or to back it up. So we kind of just got to go off what we're seeing. Um, it showed that, yeah, most of these people were in their 50s and 60s, had kids that were grown up and they had been on the board for like almost a decade, almost all of them. So they're not they're lying. They're doing that. That's one. Well, thing. They, they, they did you know? say they rotated them, I think. Se- well, every yeah, seven they're to not nine lying. Days. They, they they're, said they're, they were some, he's they're OK, but they're bending the truth by five years. They said they'd rotate him every two years and then they were rotating them every seven. No, they, That's they, a lie. They, they said seven to nine on the documentary. No, they didn't. Yeah, they said two years. No, they said seven to no, nine. We'll, we'll go back okay. and watch it. It was two and then, years. And then, you know, if you we'll, got a, we'll edit this portion if, later, if, if you've got a kid that's, uh, you know, 22 and that's, like you started, you know, nine years ago when they were 14 or 13, that would have. That's not a young kid, though. That's but, a middle aged kid. But they, they said every seven to nine years and then they would try and have people with kids that are like nine to, you know, 16. I, I, it was two years, but oh, I, that's I right. Because then if, if they're 16 and then nine years goes by, you'll have a real touch with what children are yeah, thinking at the age of 25. Uh <laughs> Well, you might have more experience with like, man, I wish I hadn't let my kid, you know. So what that basically is, is you have to have a kid of some kind and be a friend with somebody who's on the MPAA board. And that's how you get in. Well, yeah. uh, uh, the, according to the documentary, they didn't really pay him that much. I mean, it was like well, 35000 a year or something. We, we didn't know. Well, I mean, I think it's the influence that you get. It's the ability yeah. to say, hey, change this or we're not going to fucking put this movie in theaters. We're not going to sure. look or whatever. I mean, I'm over. But I think there's you don't need money. You know what I mean? It's not about money. There's definitely a lot of influence and a lot of power you have if you're on that kind of place. You saying that no one's getting any kicks in their backs for uh, changing some ratings around? <laughs> I, well, I, well, say, well, I don't think it, well, what, if I were a studio head, I would lean as hard as I could on whatever yeah. potentiality I had to make sure that my products were profitable but that, that's also why they keep them secret so their names aren't known well, yeah, I so think i'm, that's I'm sure they're super secret but even but i think that's the, top the point i was going to explain earlier is like the nca the nca <laughs> the mpa by its very by its very nature it can't have an open rating system because then people would recognize it uh, the how much of, i'm going to be political how much of an inconsistency there is in everything but but i mean like if if they let them know like hey you know you had you know three ticks against you for uh you know you use of foul language and you know like six ticks against you for you know nudity or something then you could you know and you got like this many i don't points. think they think about it like that no but i'm just saying i i think they are intentionally vague so that they can be more fluid with they have wiggle ratings. room exactly they have room and they can say well this and that they don't have to they don't want to be pinned down and if you try to pin them down they're going to move away from that right yeah i mean i i would agree with that but i mean i'm like saying if we if we could have the mpa we wanted instead of the one we deserved <laughs> movie reference yeah for those of you that don't know <laughs> PG-13. PG-13. Yeah. That would have been great if that was hard. <laughs> I don't think it would be possible to have one one system doing the ratings and not have it be corrupted in some way sure. because there's too many people who would be trying to peel away at it and say, hey, right. there's too much money and there's too many of the richest and most powerful people in the business would be coming to them all the time trying to get favors. So I just think what if you really want to push the one system model, it's inevitably going to be corrupted. So That's we- just the way. It is. Sure. So instead of the, you know, kind of like 2025 20, production company model that you were you were kind of talking about, what if you just completely expanded it and you had sort of a Rotten Tomatoes, uh, you know, and people could then, you know, vote on what I think they, you'd have private, you'd have trade press would do it. You know, the Hollywood Reporter or whatever. They yeah. would be who people would turn to for, rec, for a good, good yeah. rating system. OK, yeah. Whoever was who already had a more established reputation. Yeah, I could totally see that. Um. Yeah, I, this would be a way for them to earn a reputation, which is, by mm-hmm. the way, to my mind, what the what the industry trade press should be doing anyway. Well, that would certainly change the game, wouldn't it? Um, so so Kapil, I want to start this portion off with you again. Um, just once again, being being the only parent, um, what do you th- do? You think the MPAA is is out of touch with um, how they're rating movies and um, how they're doing this with their board members, anything like that? Do you think they need to have a complete overhaul, or are they good like they are? Uh, you know, you guys mentioned a, a minute ago how that changes depending on who's on the board at the time. Right. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't say it's outdated. I mean, it's nice to have some type of a, a baseline there, but I mm-hmm. think an adjustment can be made to where there's a happy medium of where for children, you know, for rated R and less, PG-13 and all, 
you get that information from the rating so you know what to expect for your kids that are watching. But once you get to rated R and above, they should re lighten those restrictions a little bit so that the artistic nature uh, is not sacrificed. Sure. I think there could be a bit of a, a happy medium here so where the artist is not oppressed, but you still have enough information so that the children uh, are safe. Absolutely. I would completely agree with you. Honestly, it, in my opinion, with, with, the, with the current system, not even just their board, but with the current system, NC-17 should not exist. It should not exist. And I, I'm even Well, the only reason it was brought that. in was because Rated X became like a tagline. Right. And they tried to like, they tried to make that distinction between X and NC-17 because of the pornographic, you know, the pornographic stuff. Well, Rated X now at this point, and it may be at that time that was true, but now at this point, Rated X is just, it's just porn. It's just straight up people fucking. Uh, NC-17. Yeah. Right. And so I think, so like if you look at, um, I mean, really and truly. Um, so there was a movie called uh, and it was they talked about it in the doc. It was called uh, Boys Don't Cry. And there were multiple scenes about there were multiple les lesbian sex scenes, essentially. Nowadays, you can see that in there's tons of rated R movies over the last five years that that happens. Um, in fact, there's some that I've been. Um, oh, God, there was one called Brooklyn. Um with uh, um, Carol was and Car it? Carol was the yeah. other big one with Kate Blanchett. Yeah, yeah. Um, that had multiple lesbian sex scenes in it and a black swan 15 that, black swan yeah that one oh, isn't it? that yeah that one best actress didn't win best picture right but it was nominated and when when um uh, excuse me not boys don't cry when girls don't cry came out that was labeled as nc-17 and those scenes uh, there's a little bit there's a little there's a few more minutes of naked bodies in there but there's nothing more graphic than what you saw in 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 goodfellas or in a pulp fiction you know uh and nowadays that would just be rated r um in fact i don't even know if i've seen nc-17 in the last couple of years but that one to me has always made more it's made less sense than pg-13 to me just because once you're at that age once you're legally an adult same thing you said earlier luke i'm i'm an adult you can't treat me like a fucking child and tell me i can't go see this if i want to go watch it i'm gonna go watch it mm -hmm. i have the money if you want to take my money then take it if you don't then don't make the film and don't offer it to the general public like it's it's just absolutely ridiculous so i think that portion of of the rating system is completely outdated so really we um, should change it from r to you are for unrestricted and like <laughs> sure well, yeah, once you okay. once you get once you get to that point it's like okay this is for yeah. adults now we're gonna tell you what's in it but like it doesn't really matter after yeah. that. I mean, what what parent for, right. for the most right. yeah what parent for the most part is going to take their kid to see a rated R movie? Maybe when they're sixteen or seventeen, I've seen parents mm -hmm. do that. Obviously, um, I don't know. That's one of the things I was thinking about. There are certainly movies that are rated R that I would show my kid who was that I saw when I was younger. Alien, fucking, I sure. would show that to my younger kid. Like again, it goes to the the the, the capricious nature of a rating system. It's mm -hmm. about its temporal sensibilities. It's whoever is there and what they think. And that is a judgment to my mind that seems to be better left to the consumer and the parents. Right. And, uh, you know, again, not that we don't need any rating system, but surely I am, I, nobody cares more about what the shit that goes into my kid's brain than me. Surely I'm going to the one who's can decide whether alien is good or bad for them. As mm. the parent, it should be your decision. I, Absolutely. It should not be up to a, a governing entity for sure. Um, and I, so Going back to the original question where we talked about as far as they're doing their board, I don't I don't know. I mean, this documentary is from about 14, 15 years ago. Um, so maybe they've maybe they've changed it since then. It seems like they've certainly they've certainly loosened the harness for sure. They've loosened the reins uh, because we're seeing way more in rated R movies and mature TV nowadays um, than we were 15, 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I, I think that how they set up the board, like their board of directors or their, their film raters. Um, I'm fine with, I'm fine with people being, even if it's, you meet in the middle and you say five years, you get to be on the, the board of film raters, then you got to move on. I don't think it should just be one group of parents that have young kids. I think it should be a combination of parents that have young kids it should be a combination of maybe people in their sixties and seventies, then young adults. Um, and then you you kind of throw in a, a mixture of folks. I, I don't think they should have. Remember, we talked and this is where Gary and I disagreed. I don't know. Maybe I misunderstood how, what you were saying, but they had the two religious figures in there mm -hmm. as well. Um, I think the religious aspect should be completely taken out of it. That's just me. But um, like, why would I, I guess I'm just curious why we, you would want sure. anybody but parents on the board? Because like as an adult, 
like you can you can see what any whatever movie you want right and like cuz I, I think the rating system is you know solely meant to uh in its ideal form when it's working the way it should mm -hmm. to give parents information about what kind of things their kids okay. are seeing if it's just for kids then to your argument which yeah. if it's just a parents that's fine i don't have a problem with that but then the portion of same thing i was talking about earlier nc17 um and then movies being able to be distributed to all theaters and not have ramifications if if they are NC-17. That kind of stuff should be completely taken away. If you take that away, then I don't really care because it doesn't affect me as a young adult and being being single and not having kids. Um, and I don't have to worry about what young I adult, watch, Johnny, you know. Oh, shut up, Gary. I'm going to prom next week. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, anyways, Neil, what do you think? Do you uh, do you think that the MPAA is is out of touch? I mean, I think so. So, yeah, I think they're out of touch. Um, but what is PG-13 now is what would have been R 20 years ago. Um, and it's probably so I just I do think that they're not in touch with with what's going on today. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, yeah, I would, I would I would have to agree heartily on that one. Uh, Gary, what about you? I mean, I think as we've gotten older, we've we've moved away from what the target um of the MPAA is, uh, in cause we're not necessarily looking to them for guidance on movies that we see. Like, you know, I don't know what they'd rate the human centipede, uh, you know, probably PG, but uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, PG. No. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think that, uh, they are trying to stay in touch and I think that they have moved their own standards, which I think, is a problem like they, they need to have like a like uh, uh, again you think they're, they're moving their okay you so being progressive with their standards you think is is an issue yeah i i because okay. I, I think that they should have like that, that's why having transparency with why movies score what they do i think would help because then you know you know what a, a bottle of water costs one day it should cost the next day you know and uh, I, I think the same with movies like okay. like when you're rating the movies and i i think that as they've had that drift you that's why you know you said you've seen a lot of more stuff in r-rated movies now than you would have you know 20 years ago right but a lot of the and same thing that i was saying was a lot of the stuff that i've seen so i i, I bring up um, i bring up a movie like like girls don't cry again because the reason it received that was because of just it was just lesbian sex scenes mm -hmm. and then we go back and we look at a quentin tarantino movie where there's you, know, you can see holes through guys bodies and you see the blood spray and everywhere you sat in saving private ryan mm -hmm. you know um the fact that we can watch somebody die and get mutilated but we can't watch people have sex and where they're not even like showing all of the genitals and stuff even I, I don't agree with you. On well, that. I, don't, well, I don't think that well, uh, matters again, at all. Again, I think once you hit that point of like, this is an adult movie, mm -hmm. then don't even bother rating it. So like, you know, both of those movies should be rated, you know, adult or okay, whatever. Okay, so are you, so are you saying that you think the MPAA is getting too progressive in the, the lower of the ratings? Like you think with PG-13, they're becoming too laxed or PG even. Yeah, I mean like, because PG-13 movies, I think um, have become a, a little bit, they allowed more than they used to in them. Um, sure. And look at Endgame. You talked about yeah. Thanos's head being chopped yeah. off. You know. Yeah. Um, okay. Like I, I could see in like you know the early '90s that being like an R-rated movie, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, but yeah. So I mean, I think that uh, once it gets to a point that this is an adult movie, don't bother rating it. Just say this is for adults only because it it doesn't really matter for the you mm -hmm. know for kids at that point because you should be old enough right. to make your own decisions. Sure. Okay. Luke, how about you? Another. Uh, oh, go ahead, Bill. I'm sorry. I just remembered another example I always love thinking about in the ratings discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, that film, Thank You for Not Smoking. Yeah. I love uh, that movie. It's a great movie. I always find it funny because, uh, you know, that character, gosh, I can't forget it, William uh, Macy. Yeah. William, William H. Macy. Macy mm -hmm. uh, because he wants to go back through classic films and cover up cigarette smoking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I always just, it's always a funny little tidbit when it comes to, uh, why you how do you rate stuff and why do you rate stuff yeah mm -hmm. that's always a funny example to me yeah do you go back and like blur that kind of stuff out because yeah no yeah, yeah that's yeah we're, we're kind of the answer coming across that is that absolutely not no absolutely course, not by the way for sure no you no, you don't go back and do that um you appreciate those things for what they were or you you learn from them uh, and don't do them in the future whatever i mean that's um, the trouble that's it's always gonna like with this kind of a system you're gonna be fighting this battle as long as it's around right because it's either gonna be consistent and 
and it's going to be more and more ridiculous as time goes on, or it's going to be inconsistent and progressive, and there's not really going to be a method or a madness. They're just going to kind of go with whatever temporal forces are pushing them. So, like, you're you're in a lose lose either way because of the way that it's set up. Yeah, I, and I I think they yeah. were all kind of saying, and you know, uh, I what I'm hearing is that we're all wanting the MPA to give us a rating system that's informational only and not so much restrictive because we want it for parents to tell them, Hey, this is a movie that's got this stuff in it. So if you want to let your kids watch it, this is what they'll be exposed to, but not necessarily to restrict, uh, you know, people from seeing it, if that's what they want to see. Am I hearing that? Right. right? It should be more, it should be suggestive. Yeah. Not uh, restrictive. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and and so so Luke, I mean, I guess I I kind of gathered, but I didn't ask you the question directly. Do you do you think the MPAA has become out of touch, and do you think they need a complete overhaul from where they're at? Uh, I mean, out of touch with who? I, I I don't know. I think they're probably doing exactly what the people who you know what the people who are running it want it to do. Um, but uh, I mean, does it need an overhaul? I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't think. I'm not sure it even needs to exist. I mean, I think, you, like again, sure. you could have a different way of doing it. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know who they're in touch with. But uh, I, I mean, were they ever in touch, or was it something that is it more the sort of thing that they just made decisions and the industry and consumers just kind of went along with it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, may, yeah, maybe I think with, with parents, yeah, they were probably in, in touch for the most part. Um, I think with, I don't know, e- extreme religious groups, they might've been, uh, it doesn't matter whatever the religion, it doesn't matter the religion. Um, I think they yeah, were I mean, in, touch in touch with, with who, with, that's the question. Yeah. Who are they in touch with? I don't know. Yeah. Is the majority of moviegoers? I, I can't speak. I, I can't come from an educated perspective on the exact statistics on who is seen, what types of movie right now I could give you a maybe a, 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 a decent guess um but yeah no i don't know that's 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 a good way to look at it um you know you know maybe. another interesting uh another interesting little tidbit here mm-hmm. is that with the rating systems for television and film uh i mean it's it, it's heading towards being obsolete because what you're restricting me to watch and a rated r film i can just pull up on the internet anyway sure pay, paywall frees me from many of this anyway is, is there <laughs> pornography on the internet kapil is that what you're saying no that's illegal <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> that's it no that's a, th- that's a really good point kapil um you think this is gary god <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah you yeah you can you can yeah exactly you can literally pull up anything you want to at any point um Kids i mean just go to rule 34 and yeah. then type in anything you want I mean, you know, you you look at these things where the news stations, they won't show um, like extremist groups you know, chopping people's heads off overseas and stuff like that. And Which you can just, to me is the most egregious. Like if there's one place where there should be no censorship, it's in the news. Like they should be able to show basically whatever they think is important. Sure, sure. Um, and yeah, and it's the same it, to Kapil's point. Yeah, I can just go online and I can type in extremist group chopping off British journalists head and I can I can find it. You know, do I want to do I really want to look at that? But no, of course I don't, you know, but at the same time, I could do it if I wanted to. I could, you know, I can go online. Also, and, I'm grown up enough to handle it when right. I see it. I don't need some a board of parents to sit there and explain to me why, you know. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Um, so I, you know, we we tried to get the president of Jane Cole on the on the air tonight. She refused to come on. Um so just kidding. I sent a message and never got a response from anybody. Okay. <laughs> sent right. an email. I didn't expect to. I didn't anticipate anybody saying Did that. Did you they check your finish. spam folder? <laughs> no, I didn't carry if, if her email is in your spam folder, just oh like I will be I will, there. I'll check right now. I'm looking. Right, I'm looking. I'll be so mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything from them. <laughs> I didn't I didn't uh, figure that would happen anyways. Uh <laughs> so uh yeah, a- a- absolutely. You know, there's there's definitely pros and cons of having one singular entity doing it or having every individual production company having their own guidelines. And um, yeah, good point. Good points all around. It's it's a it's a crazy one to think about, especially because it's not a government entity governing over this. It's I mean, I guess they're like Luke has said, you know, there's 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 strings attached, of course, mm-hmm. but it's it was started as or <laughs> was advertised as a private yeah uh, ownership kind of thing 
anyways, um, so I want to jump over to we talked about we talked about NC seventeen, and I'll lump this in with the PG thirteen rating. Um, but does the PG thirteen rating hurt films? Does it hurt the industry? Um, I personally, I I think it's more of a cash grab than anything else. Um, because if you have nothing in between PG and R, then you have such a gray area between the ages of probably, uh, you know, 10 or 11 and then 15 to 16, um, on whether or not parents can take their, their, uh, adolescents and teenagers to go see certain films. So, uh, Gary, I know how strongly you feel on this one and I can't wait to hear your rant. Is there a point in rating a movie PG 13 anymore, or was there ever a point in rating at that? I've always been a very strong opponent of the PG 13 rating. I think that it, the only thing that it does is it takes movies that ought to be R and pulls them down and waters them down. I don't think it ever pushes any PG movie up to a PG 13. Um, no, but it designates teen movies. That's the other thing. It designates the teen demo that this is a movie you guys are interested in. Yeah. Right. But I mean, like, there are so many the the problem with it is and it does do that luke but the problem with it is is it takes a movie that like so let's look at the die hard franchise um for instance so first two are christmas movies clearly but um like die hard one two and three are all r-rated movies and then die hard four and five are pg-13 so what you miss out when you're not in an r-rated movie is you've got to be careful of the language uh, so you can't just say, you know, uh, any word you want at any time. Uh, you can't have any blood in your violence um, or you can't have any like gunshot and like there's blood that spurts out of. If you get punched, I, you can still have some blood, but it's it's very limited. You got to be careful with that. Um, not so much for the diehard movies, but you also have to be uh, much more restricted with what sort of like uh, uh, sexual poses you can have and things like that. Um, and I like, if you look at not only because they're sequels, number four and five, uh, but like it, since they went into the PG 13 rating to kind of get into that broader audience, um, it really like watered down and tamped down what the, the spirit of that movie was, you know, cause you, you look, you watch the first die hard and like, he's getting shot up and like, he's bleeding and just in a lot of pain and, you know, that's John McClane. Whereas like in Die Hards four and five, it's like, you know, he gets some scrapes and some cuts, but like, it's not, it's not the same feel for the movie. And to me, that's what the problem is because it ruins the tone of what you're trying to make. And that's the worst thing that it can possibly do, which, and like, there's tons and tons of movies that are like that. Um, and that you just watch and you're like, this isn't what, you know, it ought to be like, you know, James Bond running around and shooting people and no blood being anywhere. It's like, this doesn't make sense. Um, so, and I, I think in that documentary, they talked about how, um, with the no blood, it, it kind of actually may make issues worse. Like, you know, cause if you don't see what the reactions of, or the consequences of your actions are, you might, you know, go to Columbine and shoot up with the place and, you know, not understand that there's gonna be a lot of blood and gore and, you know, pain when you do that. Yeah. Cause I think on the, uh, the, this film is not yet rated. He said like, he talked about it. Yeah, yeah, he, said, he, he said movies without blood should be a higher rating. Cause you have to understand as a adult. That's mind, not realistic. Yeah. That that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a fantasy. It's, it's funny. We talk about children nowadays being desensitized to violence and, and gore and, and, and nudity. Um, they have a different, different view of, of sex than, than, um, our parents did and stuff back in the day for sure. Uh, but at the same time, you see that what you're talking about, and it desensitizes the desensitization. Almost is that a resensitization? I guess so. Oh, okay. <laughs> you resensitize? Yeah, no. Um, so yeah, it's it's it is certainly an interesting way to look at it. Um, Luke, it, it sounded like you were you were about to ask Gary a question anyway. So I'll jump to you. Um, what do you, what do you think with with a PG thirteen? Is there a, is there a point in having that rating? Um, well, I mean, I suppose so, because I recognize the argument that there needs to be something between, um, G and adults only and adults, yeah. you know what like I mean? PG and an R, huh? Right. Or G and PG and then, right. and then, you know, the free field, but I don't think it, honestly, I don't think it's about PG 13 or PG 14 or PG 12. I think the only reason any of this matters is because of the nature of the system. And as if, 
if we if it was more voluntary in the sense of that if you were a 12 year old kid and you could go into a pg-13 movie or rather if i as the person who was the proprietor of a movie theater could decide i'm gonna let you know younger kids into this pg-13 movie or whatever it is then i think it wouldn't matter because there will be no consequences to whether this is a PG-13 or whether this is an R. The only thing that makes the discussion relevant is because there are genuine consequences to what the ratings are. Right. And then because that's the case, it's just going to come down to whether your personal opinion is the same as those people who've made the decision. If you agree with them, you're going to say, OK, well, this is a good way. I think PG-13 is the right. We should have a little bit. of. And if you disagree with them, you're not going to agree and you're going to think. So it's really like no matter what you do, whether it's PG-13, PG-14, PG-15, PG-13. 12 there's always going to be because of the way this is set up there's always going to be this inconsistency in this back and forth and so i don't think it's about pg-13 i think it's about the consequences of what these ratings are that really makes it important okay okay uh kapil same question to you um I, i'm not sure how far away your your kids are from being uh in that that teenage area um but what do you think do you think pg-13 is uh is necessary is there a point to having it or should we just get rid of it and go from pg to r I I, I don't see a point of getting rid of it at this stage because mm -hmm. it's a good indicator, right? It, otherwise, you're just kind of lost. Like like you guys have just been saying, between G and adult, it's just like there's nothing in between. It's, it's nice wide to have open. a little indication just so you kind of have an idea of which way it's leaning, but it doesn't need to be so firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right? It, it, it can be PG-13, uh, you know, suggested, and with this information. So this, this particular PG-13 production has language and violence and uh smoking yeah uh versus you know sexual content and nudity sure uh maybe my eight-year-old can see it but uh, maybe my eight-year-old can't see it but my 14-year-old yeah can, but so if you give if you give the parents the the appropriate information uh and you let the parent decide right, what the, the maturity level of their child is right right uh and you know even when it comes to things like like last night i was watching an episode of I Love Lucy with my kids, uh -huh. uh, Great show. and Lucy and Ricky smoke in the in, in that show, uh, and I explained to my children that look, in those days, people smoked and they didn't understand the ramifications of it, but it's extremely dangerous today, uh, and instead of sheltering children, I think exposing them to Preparing things them. of the world at, at when when the parent feels it's the right time for that child, based on their maturity and and. Yep, exactly. But you can't hide these things because you're going to go out, go out. We go out to dinner to restaurants and there's people smoking around and right. you have to kind of explain to children what that is, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and also I would say like I've seen Terminator 2 a, a million times, right? And like when I was in high school, Scarface was my favorite movie and that almost got an NC-17. Right. You know what I mean? So like I – it's perfectly possible for stuff like – if I was a parent, I would show my kid Terminator 2 when he was probably like six years old because I'd be like, bro, you're going to love this movie. It's this fucking awesome killer robot from the future, and he fucking does all this shit. And like I remember seeing it as a kid, and it didn't traumatize me. It didn't fade. You know what I mean? It was just – I loved it. One of the reasons I loved that movie is because I saw it when I was young, and it blew my mind, even though according to the powers that be, I couldn't handle it. Right. Right. And uh, Neil, what do you think? Do you think that there's a point in rating a movie PG-13 nowadays? Yeah, I mean, I think it's beneficial and it's good. I just hate how it's used because mm -hmm. PG-13 basically becomes a catch-all for anything that's not R and it's more than just a kid's movie. And I do feel like a lot of movies that would be really good R movies are brought down to PG-13 mm -hmm. in the editing room to make it more appealing to the masses. Sure, sure. And Gary, to go back to your to go back to your point from earlier, I think with the problem that I think more of what you're getting at, or maybe it's just me. My thing with PG thirteen is the entertainment value, and I think that's more along the lines of what you and I have discussed before. Is that when a movie is PG thirteen, it could be better if it was rated R. I'm like, oh man, they almost got there if they had just shown uh, that that woman's uh, breasts, you know, if they shown her tits or they right, but that's had actually because of the gone consequence. in. Go ahead. 
it's because of the consequences of the rating system. Right. Like right. they make rated R movies PG thirteen because they want to get more people's more people. asses in the seats sure. who are under thirteen. If it did, if they had that discretion, if PG thirteen wasn't weighted so heavily that it's literally illegal for you to see, you know, a rated R movie if you're not seventeen, then the studios wouldn't care because it wouldn't matter if it got a PG thirteen on R. The same number of people can go and see it, and we can make the same amount of money. So all these complaints are all rooted in the fact that the studios are restricted by the rating system and profitability. It has nothing to do with where they put the stake down. The fact that the stakes are being put down is the problem. Right. And I, 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 and I agree with you on that portion. I would disagree on certain films in general. Um, I think back to what I was originally saying in general, the, the point that they don't take it far enough, the fact that they don't have more violence, the fact that they don't have more gore, whatever, because to Luke's point for that reason, um, they wanted to have a broader audience I think that certainly ruins some films. Don't get me wrong. Where I disagree with you on, though, is if I go back and I look at um, and I would just I'll go back to the Oscar representation for a second. Um, I do think from somebody who I don't have my own children, but I can tell you I, I did work with kids for a long time uh, as a teacher. And when I was working with them, the the mental capacity and maturity between an uh, an eight and a, a 10 or 11 year old is actually, I know it's only two or three years, but when they're younger, it's actually much different. You know, the difference between a 14 and a 10 year old or 11 year old is much different. Um, you know, one's going through puberty and one's not, uh, you know, one's hitting their stride and one isn't. Uh, and for sure, I'm sure there's different case. It's case by case basis with, you know, one kid is more mature. One 11 year old is more mature than their friend for X amount of reasons, whatever. Um, but I do think PG 13 is necessary when it comes to, you know, to, to Kapil's point, when it letting the parents know here are, here's what's happening. Here's the description of it. And then you can decide on your own. Because if you look at pictures, like we'd look at Lord of the Rings, would Lord of the Rings have been way more awesome with a ton of bloodshed? Maybe, but it's also, it's a, it's a mythical fairy tale feel with violence inside. I didn't have a problem with the way Peter Jackson shot orcs getting stabbed or guys getting slashed across the chest and you didn't see a ton of blood spewing out because it's that fairy tale whimsical kind of feel to it. I'm cool with it. It's an adventure movie. It's not a blood and gore action shoot em up kind that of thing. should be peter jackson's you know? choice it sure. shouldn't be peter jackson being told hey we're not going to let you sell this movie to half the but audience it, it, if that, you don't that, change my it. point and i i do agree with you on that but my point being is that was peter jackson's choice if you and you've you've read the lord of the rings books you know back in the day um i mean tolkien didn't set it up where he was like oh and he cut the orc open and he was gushing blood none of that wasn't like the gore and the graphic detail was not in the books mm -hmm. so peter jackson was true to the novels and he went with that so while i agree with you it should be his art artistic decision which way he wants to go he did make that artistic decision he decided to go that way would it have been more entertaining well, yeah, if to it was, god bless him but sure, that sure. shouldn't you know what i mean it should all that yeah. should be the case that should be the standard right it should be the artist does and then you know the people who are giving him the money can have the fight with them right. about what it should look right. like I, yeah. I don't think and, we're in disagreement here because I, I i don't think no, the lord not. of the rings would have been better had it been more violent okay sure. I, no, I, I think no, I it's think, not star trek discovery no luke <laughs> uh, i think that it like hit the notes that it was exactly supposed to hit um and i also agree that i that having like a teen rating or pg-13 is fine but agreeing with luke it does hinder the artist because they have they whether they want to or not to they're first operating within that constraint most because most people don't have the the guts of a quentin tarantino or a john right. waters or a, a stanley kubrick to be like john waters i'm i'm doing what i want to do yeah um you know or the power how are you going to tell the or studio the power, hey yeah. if you're just some nobody director they're going to be like uh no you're not you're fired and you'll never work again because we are the studio execs and you are some nobody yeah. starving like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's very few directors who have the poll and very few artists who have the poll to tell the studio this is what i'm gonna do like it or lick it right and I think that with with some of them where I do and uh, I do like the PG-13 rating, you look at a movie like A Beautiful Mind or something like that, where the amount of violence that was in it, uh, the amount of 
um, the amount of, I, I suppose, intense scenes that they had. Yeah, I, I could see a, a 13 or 14 year old being able to handle that. But some of it was it was pretty realistic and scary, like he's beating, beats the kid, beats the wife. You know, that would not be something I don't I think a nine or 10 year old will be able to handle because it might be too close to home. Um, so, yeah, but like you once again, we can all agree that it should be the individual's choice for sure. Yeah, it should be more um, of a guideline than like a hard set rule. And uh, mm-hmm. it, it shouldn't be at all affecting how the director makes the movie. Um because that I you know as I think we've all agreed on is it, that just taints the product because you know Lord of the Rings didn't need all that blood it told the story it was going to tell it did that great that's wonderful you know but another movie um, Watchmen if it had been made for PG thirteen it wouldn't have been the story that it that Zack Snyder had to tell. Deadpool sure. not Zack Snyder but Deadpool probably I mean I know they made one but I mean was such a big deal when Deadpool came out was yeah. that it was that it was that tone was was that rated R tone yeah. more mature and if you watch Deadpool I mean it's not like super rated R I mean it's like it's not a Marvel movie basically right like it's a step up I mean I know what it is but it's not your app it's not Iron Man like there's a little more maturity in it than your regular kind of run-of-the-mill Marvel movie and like you know you can see why I got that rating but it's not on the like Deadpool got the same rating as Goodfellas. I mean, those aren't anywhere near the same movie. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, you know, it should be more of, uh, you know, like a rainbow in terms of like, there's not a hard demarcation between level one, level two, level three. It kind of flows into each other because, you know, this falls about here. This falls about here. Sure. You know, and just to help parents understand what they'd be taking their kids to or people if they don't want yeah. to be exposed to certain things can understand that i think yeah we i think we can all agree that it's fine to have the guidelines and things of that nature but really in yeah. the in the end it should be up I to the individual. Wrong with yeah there should be there should be no yeah. ramifications from you know the from the government or from uh from the production companies or whatever uh for them rating it a certain way and not being able to show it um so uh we're at the point in the show uh we do have to let kapil go i know that he's got uh, some pretty important business to attend to so kapil thank you so much for joining yes, us thank man you, Kapil. always a pleasure guys thanks again for having me this i really do enjoy these conversations with, with you guys and i i hope you'll invite me back again a- absolutely brother absolutely uh, yeah we'll hope we'll hope to have you on soon right, sure. take care take care all right man uh okay so uh so uh now we have kapil off we can talk about the real point of this episode yes how much, we, how much we hate Gary. What a yep. bitch Kapil was for. <laughs> so I, I would quite, like, the, quite the opposite. Um, no, no, no. I'm, I'm totally kidding. Did you see how nice he was when he left, thanking everybody like an asshole, being oh, all yeah, like un- appreciative. Un- unlike you, that would just be like, "All right, peace, bitches. I hate everybody," and just hang up. Or maybe that would be me. Hang up. We're not on a well, you phone. Hang, you hang up in these calls. <laughs> We're not on a call. Whatever. We're on it's Discord. Discord chat. Okay. Fuck it. Who cares? Who cares? Bill, if you're listening to this, I, I was joking. You were very polite. I, you sure. were very. I was. <laughs> just I'm, don't be mad. I'm sure I'm not. he knows you were kidding, dude. Uh, I would like to pose the panel a question. Uh, does the rating system really matter much anymore? I mean, with so many different streaming services and, you know, ways you can watch it on the Internet, like, is the I mean, certainly the MPAA has lost a lot of uh, its clout and ability to influence if a movie's successful, since there are no successful movies in box offices anymore in this brave new world which we live in. Um, So is the MPAA like, is this almost a moot conversation at this point? Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, like Mortal (laughs) Kombat today uh was, yeah, I was just thinking about yeah. that it's it, it's only and, and i think you know it's 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 important that we talk about a, a essentially a governing entity that controlled distribution really if you think about it they controlled distribution where this was going to theaters for over and seven i think that was years. the real point yeah abs- absolutely Ultimately, i think that was the point yeah. it wasn't they wanted a, a gateway to distribute or a um sure a gatekeeping method on distribution and they sold it as a way to protect content yeah and they 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 kind of hoodwinked everybody by pulling the wool over their eyes with oh it's the the parents come in and you which know, is not untrue you know what i mean it's, it's not, not untrue but they, it's a bending they of the truth do that it's a bending of the truth, though. It's it's not completely on. It, it wasn't the whole truth. It wasn't yeah. what I say. It's not the whole truth. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, but I mean, with streaming services now, 
they they do have ratings on the streaming services, but the streaming services don't actually have to adhere to any of these rating systems because they've never agreed to it's paywall. Right. Ex- Once you're on a paywall, you're right. you're whatever. Except Netflix actually was the first streaming service for some reason to jump they, on yeah, the board of directors. In, I know. Right. And I, I still don't know why they did that. It blows my but, mind. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, but again, it. I think that goes to my answer to this, which is that they are less important, but they're still because they're big into IP, too. That's the right. other thing. Sure. And that's a real big thing in the digital space. And I think that's what Netflix is game is. Right. Okay. It's it's probably true. It's, it's yeah. Digital IP. They've been they've been at the spearhead of digital piracy for damn near 20 years now. You know what I mean? They've been on the front lines of shutting down P2P servers and of all those I mean, they were the ones who pushed SOPA. They were the ones who had some of their lawyers write SOPA back in 2014 when they wanted to push it through. Uh-huh. So I mean, they've been digital piracy has been what they've been on kind of since the turn of the century. And for right. streaming services, that's obviously a big deal because the trouble with streaming is that once you brought, once you stream it, it's out. You know what I mean? It can be pirated. And the only way, you know, you, the big companies always had a, had a feeling about that. That's why they were always so hesitant about leaning into streaming services because they lost control of the content. Right. And so I think Netflix going on board with them is a sign that that's kind of where their future is, which is not. Which just is not, I think, a good sign for us. I'm not looking forward to seeing how that plays out in the next five years. Yeah, I don't how... see anything good coming no, from either. that. Um, so, Neil, now you're the closest to being a resident father on this panel. So um, with the streaming services, basically getting rid of the rating system almost. Um, does that I mean, does that worry you as a prospective parent or as a, as a future parent? Like, you know, you're not going to be able to you know, you're not sure what you're going to be able to let your kids watch. You're going to have to, like, watch all their movies for them ahead of time. How do you think you're going to handle that? I mean, speaking with absolutely no experience, uh, I don't know. I feel <laughs> you will like, soon. <laughs> lol. I feel like if, you know, the rating system is still around and there's a way to monitor on streaming services, it would be great because, you know, there's always like parental lock. I can be like nothing uh, above G sure. until they're older, or nothing above PG without me, you know, sure. signing off on it. Uh, I think that aspect would be beneficial, but also – I understand taking responsibility for what my kids are watching and not just letting them, hey, here you go. Enjoy free roam of anything you can find on Netflix. (laughs) Wait, you're going to actually take responsibility for your kid? That's crazy. Involved in what they're... It's it's a very, very rare trait, uh, you know, in society. But yeah, that's my my plan at least. (laughs) But but, I mean, hey, at least by the time they're four or five, you're going to have shown them My Cousin Vinny, obviously. But, you know, I don't think it's a two. I don't think it's the either or. Like, I think if you could snap your fingers and remove the MPAA today, right? Like, I would bet you the rating system as it is would probably still stay. It's an industry standard. Most consumers recognize it. Most of the business is already set up for it. So, like, it would probably still be the way it is. There just wouldn't be as many crimes. You know, there wouldn't be as much punitive measures attached to it. So, like, I don't. I think even if you got rid of the MPA, like, I don't think there would ever be a situation where you would never have any rating. I just don't see how that's possible because companies themselves would rate their products because they recognize that consumers need to know. It's just like when you get a broadband router and there's like this is an a this is a b like this is the speed category like this that's always going to be there and again i think if you really did if the industry really couldn't if the companies themselves couldn't decide on a standard which they've done throughout all of history very quickly you would have the press you know you'd have the newspapers and you'd have outlets who research this stuff and who spend all their time doing it maybe youtube channels and they would come up and there would be there would be homogenization and a standardization amongst them but there would always be something it would never be they're just going to throw films out and not tell you what's in them. The companies would never yeah. do. I mean, some of them might, but you would never get in a situation where there would just be no rating system and no way for us to know. It's, it's interesting. Cause like for this podcast, um, if you're listening to it, it's, it's rated explicit. Um, right. And basically that was me checking a box saying this program is explicit. It's going to have a lot of, you know, fucks and cursing. We're going to talk about sex and dicks and tits and let's it, see how many yeah. crass yes. curse words we can throw well, out and be as vulgar as possible in the next 30 seconds. Well, Everybody I'm, go. I'm, I'm just saying like, <laughs> so it's, it's a self rating, a self reporting that we do because I don't want, you know, 
a, a young kid to listen well, to sure, this. Sure, I don't want a 12-year-old yeah. hearing all this shit we have to say. I mean, um, Because that's just not how this program is geared toward. Right. Now, we could certainly do well, one. We also yeah. want the audience to know, like, hey, we are going to drop some F-bombs. Like, if you're the kind of who's, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a no-holds-barred kind of conversation. Yeah. Right. and I so I think, Howard Stern kind of thing. Yeah, sure. so I, I think that there is a lot of internal uh, impetus for people that that make films and movies and and TV shows to to be upfront with that because they like I want our audience to know what they're going to get you know when they click on us like and I I think movies uh would would want to do the same thing for the same reasons right they don't want to sit there and answer the questions of like well why is your rated R different than MGM they would say okay this is what because this is what they always do what is everybody else doing can we do it if as profitable or a little bit more profitable than them okay let's do that mm -hmm. I mean I have to imagine that the these big um, production houses have to like the MPA taking the liability of it like well and that's the trade-off they get right that's the mpa's little thing is like hey you can buy into this it's voluntary we'll take the liability but also we take the dress we essentially control distribution you know not control but effectively have the major influence on, are the major influence on distribution yeah and and that that's what they're doing um and it's influence yeah quotes yes. and there's a reason it was started by the heads of the studios you know exactly. what i mean yeah. they, the big six you know, I, I think I think that we can certainly all agree that it, it's 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 nice to have seen their power be limited at this point. It's also nice for parents in particular to have that extra information so they can gauge whether or not they want their young children or their teenagers or tweens or whatever adolescents to be able to watch certain films. It goes the other way, too. Like there are people who have. You know, we've been mentioning on the podcast like, oh, you know, these parents who wanted, but there are people who parents who completely disagree with the MB and who see sure. things that are rated PG and PG-13 and say this is completely inappropriate for my 13 year old. Why on earth would you rate this PG-13? So, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't yeah, necessarily sure even protect the parents anyway. I mean, if you're particularly if you're kind of a religious person, you have a lot of problems with what the MPA says is OK for kids. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, especially nowadays, for sure. Um, you know, I, I haven't, I, I guess I didn't, I didn't read a ton, read a ton of articles. I can, I can agree with you on the fact, uh, I had, um, some of my family, they're non-denominational, um, for those that aren't familiar with the, the sects of Christianity, um, it's pretty much like evangelist, pretty damn close. Uh, uh, oddly enough, you, it says non-denominational, you'd think, oh, they don't really have any particular preference one way or the other no no it's, the title is misleading um but they that's because they're all those other people were not denominational enough for <laughs> there them. you go <laughs> you guys you guys are radical but not as radical as we want you to be so get the fuck out exactly of here. so we're not with y'all we're <laughs> over here doing <laughs> so my aunt and my and my aunt and uncle when we were younger um they had one of those machines on the television that would not only block off certain television shows depending on the rating but it would know all of the, it would know the script of every commercial and movie and tv show it's on crazy. television ahead of time so if there was anything that even said like butt or crap or you know ass or shit or anything like that it would block the word out completely the sound would shut off on the tv and it would come up with a substitute word as a subtitle beneath and mm -hmm. then it would that's person crazy would i know it, it's nuts it, it's interesting because they did an episode of black mirror that was basically that uh, okay i don't think i saw that one that's uh, that's interesting yeah it was uh this mother she uh put a, a chip in her kid her, uh -huh. her young daughter so she wouldn't see any violence or gore or hear anything negative i did see that yeah. one and, and she so would, would go like, blind when it, or it would blur yeah. right yeah and, yeah and so like her, her mother at one point like is having like a, a heart attack or something and she, or like and she she it blurs her vision so right. she can't see her to help her so yeah it's it's very uh it, it's similar to that, I think. Sure. Yeah. yeah and and did that on South Park. Remember, Carton got the chip the in him chip. in the uh, South okay. Park movie. Yeah. yeah. It, so it, that he wouldn't. Must curse. have been around the same time. And I think that uh, certainly, th certainly these these parents, you know, my 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 family and stuff, they they had every right to do that. I mean, that's that's their family. It's their yeah, choice. So they want to do it. That's their choice. Right. Um. But it even got to that. 
it, just speaking to your point, Luke, where you thought that they they would agree with you that the MPAA was too lenient. And this was back in the late 90s before, like, these progressive changes had really come up. Like, we had started to see that movement in the, the 2010s. Um, and so we were watching Spaceballs, and we were 13 or 14, and my cousins were all around that age. I think my youngest cousin would have been 11 at the time, 10 or 11. And then my other cousins were, like, 14, 16, and 17. And they have that scene towards the beginning where, he, where Rick Moranis is talking about uh, major apps asshole is anybody in here not an asshole or, or whose name is major asshole and everyone's like me or i whatever the hell was surrounded by assholes surrounded by assholes and mm-hmm. my uncle just comes like he comes marching into the room and immediately he's like oh no we're not doing this we're not doing and and that's Mel Brooks, the dumbest, like softest, yeah. like most unoffensive. I mean, maybe yeah. not then, but I think, now, you know, it's hard to look yeah. at Mel Brooks humor and say this is this is not like kind of silliness. Sure. You know, absolutely. Um, so you're you're very right. I mean, I, I tell that story because to me, it's I'm like, OK, that's a little for me personally, that's too much policing for my kids. I probably wouldn't go quite that far. Um, but I totally I, I totally I, I would agree with you. Yeah, I would think there are there's a small sect of society that would agree the MPAA was too lenient even 20 years ago when we thought they were too strict. So it's certainly interesting to see both sides of the aisle on that. Um, and then then the, the folks in the middle, too, That's the issue, right? Like, right. ultimately, it's going to come down to the parents discretion anyway. Sure. Exactly. So why why bottleneck the distribution mm-hmm. system unless you're unless it's criminal? It's not about the parental yeah. thing unless that's kind of you know how you sell it to the public. Yeah, you're destroying free enterprise at that point, saying they can't show this because of this one scene of whatever, you know. Um, there's nothing it, if I if I want to see if if New Line Cinema makes a movie that I want to see and I'm willing to pay them. There's no reason. There's no practical right for anyone to get in the middle of that transaction yeah absolutely uh so guys unfortunately we are coming towards the end of tonight's episode um i i I love i love having topics like this because the 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 debates and discussions you can get in um it's better than just going over oh i like these movies these guys did and let's all agree on this philosophy and shit tarantino's the second best director of all time now he is (laughs) but you know mine's more crazy whatever um so let's go i was gonna say do we all like quentin (laughs) yes Yes. well neil gary ian and i did our our uh uh, second episode of best directors in hollywood and we all picked tarantino as number two on our top five list uh so number two yeah Yeah. all of us were number two every single one um you could agree on number one no no no, no. we disagreed i said scorsese um I had Spielberg. Probably would have said Kubrick if I was there. I would have probably said Kubrick. Yeah. Um, Ian said Scorsese, but he said that because he didn't want to repeat with Kubrick for some reason. I was like, well, then though, are they tied for first? <laughs> I guess. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, so let's go ahead. Let's round. Let's round out with uh, uh, some our, our recommendations for the week, preferably a movie that maybe was a, a pg or a pg-13 rating that you thought should have been a rating higher maybe or uh maybe a uh an r rating that should have been pg-13 or a g that should have been pg or the secret garden rated the r secret garden um <laughs> it's actually a porno or jesus a, christ <laughs> or secret garden um i'm i'll start just to give everybody an example um this one was rated pg-13 very easily could have been r and i thought due to the due to the dark and morbid tone that they had underlying the entire film they should have gone a step further and chris nolan normally does that i'm gonna go with the dark knight on this one i thought it should have been r i think the scene in particular with the one that always stood out was when the joker slams that guy's head into the pencil on the table with crafty camera techniques you don't see a ton but that still is ingrained in my mind to this day uh, of just the most memorable deaths somebody could have because um, they didn't show any blood. They didn't show like a close up of it going directly through his skull or anything like that. This day, um, even but, talking about it, I get a little uncomfortable. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's kind of gross. So like, ugh. <laughs> and I would have liked like in a good way. It's oh, like yeah. so visceral. You're, you know, absolutely. You could have thrown a couple F dropped a couple F bombs in there. You could have shown a little more graphic nature, maybe a sex scene, you know, if you had to. And it still would have been a really good film, maybe even better. I thought that one could have been rated R and um, they should have pushed it up to the top. But I haven't rated a big blockbuster as a recommendation in a while. Um, Dark Knight, I mean, that was 
Heath Ledger's actually had a lot of good performances. People don't realize that he's done more stuff than just that and a Knight's Tale. Um, I was just gonna then, say a Knight's Tale. Yeah, a Knight's Tale's a great movie, and he does a great he does a fantastic the things job. I hate about you. Yeah. He was great in ten things. He was. He's he's uh, he was a very versatile actor. It wasn't just it wasn't just uh, Joker. Once again, showing that method actors are the best actors. No, nope. um, Gary, they give their life for their craft. They're, what does I mean, technical I actors do? Yeah, uh, they good. continue they're to live good. their life because they realize it's a job. And they're also it's not life. clinically insane. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the, it's it's one of Chris Nolan's masterpieces. My personally, my favorite Batman movie. Um, and it may have just been for the Joker in that, honestly. Even though I did like Aaron Eckert as as Two Face, I know a lot of people didn't. I thought he did a good job. Um, mm, maybe yeah. not quite. Cr- maybe not quite menacing and crazy enough at the end. Um, you really need Tommy Lee Jones epi- for that. Yeah, the, the Dark Knight could be a whole it episode because I got a whole beef with Act Three of the Dark Knight. Sure. Like I love the Dark Knight, but Act, Act Three fucking annoys yeah. me. Okay, and we, we I can, like Act One and Two, but Act Three, Christopher we'll, we'll Nolan, get into, man, uh, I feel like he we'll doesn't get into know how to tie stuff up. But yeah, anyway, yes, yes, that we'll get into the Batman franchise at some point, um, and you'll you could be on that episode. Um, Dark Knight is going to be my recommendation for this week. So, uh, for most of you, I'm sure have seen it. If you haven't, go check it out. Uh, Neil, let's go to you. In 1984, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Dune came out, and the same year, Gremlins came out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Indiana Jones was directed by Steven Spielberg, and Gremlins was produced by Steven Spielberg. Uh, After they came out, they both got PG ratings, and Spielberg actually came up with the idea, maybe we should come up with a new rating between PG and R, came out with PG-13. So my recommendation is going to be the first movie to get the PG-13 rating, which was Red Dawn. Oh, Oh my gosh. I just watched that movie. That's a great movie. That is a good movie. I don't know if that should be PG-13, though. (laughs) What'd you say? I don't know if that should be PG-13, though. It's kind of violent. Like, Yeah. yeah, That movie should be R. (laughs) Yeah. God damn you, Steven Spielberg. Why are you such a good director? Great movie. Yeah, it is. It is. And that certainly certainly fits the bill. It's one that could, could it, should it be R today or would it remain PG-13? Who knows? Uh, Yeah, that's that's a really good one. Uh, Luke, let's go to you. All right, so I'm going to go in a bit of a different direction um, than the position that I've taken all night, which is I'm going to try and be consistent here, is that I do believe that the artist should be free and the consideration should be between the artist and the person who's paying him. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I also believe that art does triumph through adversity, and I think the biggest problem in Hollywood now is they give too many of these self-indulgent artists $100 million and say, do whatever you want, when some of the best movies in history were made on tight budgets where creative people with passion had to make it work just because they wanted to make it work so because i'm gonna take a contrary position i'm gonna say i do believe the artist should be free to do what they want but i also think that the artist needs to be restrained by the money people so that they're forced to be of a little bit of duty and the reason the reason i say that is because my recommendation is going to be the 1995 mortal Kombat that was rated pg-13 <laughs> that i think is going to be um, from what I've seen of the new Mortal Kombat, although it's good, um, the whole selling point is it's rated R. It's going to be fatalities and blood, just like the game. And I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and say the new one will not be as good as the PG-13 one because mm. their focus on the uh, indulgent blood is taking away from characters and story, which is ultimately at the heart of any movie. Sure. Uh, and so against everything I've said in this podcast, I'm going to go ahead and show Mortal Kombat 1995 as this is why adversity and art triumph is because the restrictions of the PG-13 rating that they put on Paul Anderson made him uh, do really light on the blood and focus more on the character work. And it made for a better movie. Can we all just agree that, Mortal Kombat has one of the greatest theme songs of anything oh, sure. ever done ever. Yeah. It really does. Not even just video really games. I mean, I don't yeah. think anybody would argue with that. I, would, yeah. I wouldn't argue okay. with that. I'm not, even, I'm not even a big video game person. I wouldn't argue that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think any thinking person could argue with I mean, you know, dumb people say dumb things, but it's you know. true. It's very true. <laughs> Gary, how about you? Uh, I'm going to uh, say uh, Suicide Squad for mine. It was a oh, uh, movie okay. that was rated PG 13 and, uh, what? It was not really a very good movie. Um, it sucked. <laughs> but I, I think that if it had had a little bit more gumption and been a little bit more edgy, like stuck to the material a little bit more, then you you would have ended up with a movie that was a little bit more like Watchmen. Sure. Yeah, uh, which I, I really like Watchmen. Um, and that's a solid R movie. Yeah, um, it is. And I, I, I think that... Seeing uh, Dr. Manhattan's dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For long stretches of time. Very long stretches of time. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Suicide Squad. Um, 
It is really you're just going to watch it for the one bar scene because that's really the best scene in the movie uh, in terms of character development. Right. Um, but uh, do you know like Jaws was rated R, like the 1975 Spielberg movie? I thought it was PG. No, it was almost rated NC-17. What? Or X back then. Really? Yeah. No, I did not know that. I, yeah. thought, I thought I got a low rating. No. And then he, he yeah. almost got an X rating. The blood, right? Oh, no, it was the woman swimming in the water and then all the blood and everything. All right. Jaws is a great did they, movie. Did they change it? No, it just. Because I'm, I'm looking at an article right here that says it's PG. They they must have changed it because it originally was a, it was a hard R. Okay. I, well, no, wasn't that the whole reason that they went with using the fin and stuff was because. They are. No, I guess that was one of the restrictions of the shark. I remember yeah. them saying, like, that's another example of triumphing through adversity. Steven Spielberg didn't have a very good working shark, so we had to kind of make mm-hmm. allusions to the shark being there. Yeah. And if it was nowadays, they would have given him $100 million, and Jaws would have been fucking jumping up yeah. on the boat, dancing around with the captain. Yeah. Fucking. But uh, Jaws is a great movie. I'm going to change my recommendation yes. to Jaws. Watch Jaws. <laughs> yeah. That's like, <laughs> it's it's like Jaws or Suicide Squad. <laughs> mm. As great as Jared it's Leto like two was movies in as one. the Joker. Joker. Yeah. 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 And Will yeah. Smith is is what Deadshot or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, forgettable <laughs> film. Uh all right guys, well anyways, that is all the time unfortunately we have for tonight. Uh it is laid out here on the third coast in Texas. And uh I'm going to I'm going to keep going with third coast. There you go. I'm going to make it stick. Anyways, uh Ooh, Luke, thanks again. Thanks coast. again for joining us man. Always a pleasure having you on. Uh always delightful conversations, debate and banter for sure. Uh, for all of us here at I Don't Give a Flick, I'm Johnny. I'm Gary. And I'm Neil. And we will see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to Leadfeather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Leadfeather production. Copyright Leadfeather Productions 2021.